met a gypsy. Folks, and we think electric motorcycles are horrible. Whether, yeah, whether yeah. my opinion of that doesn't matter, the reality is like as a whole, we live in nostalgia of two strokes and oh. think that electric bikes are hell. And it's like, that's change. Are we going to be okay with change? Do we want to grow the sport? Oh, well, man, I get it all the time because I'm like, I just finally said it this year. I'm like, you know what? Privacy is need to go. Sorry. Dude, you better you know, not walk into a stadium. <laughs> I, but I just, and then the, the pushback that I get is it okay if I jump in your boat? Yeah, dude, do it. <laughs> There's plenty of room. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm in. The, the 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 feedback that I get from people is like, but dude, they're the heart and soul of the sport. And yeah. I'm like, are they? They're the history of the sport for sure. They are, right? But name one 250B practice rider right now. I mean, you're in a dude. You probably can. <laughs> yeah. But like, I can't. Yeah. I, do, I don't. Does that mean that they're like, I don't want that person to have like a pathway into Supercross and – no, F2. They, it's they like should, F two yeah. and F three. One hundred percent. Let's go make arena cross or make the other 100%. thing a viable. One hundred percent. Yep. I would want to see because that guy is actually the dude that I don't know and I've never heard of and I couldn't tell you and I'm telling you like just get off the track right now is unreal yeah. at riding a motorcycle. Yep. So much better than me. Oh, so killer. much worth watching. Amazing. Like a dude deserves to be racing yep. in a stadium. Just not a Supercross yeah. until you're one of those guys. Yeah. There should be another place that you can go that you can build your race craft, excel, get sponsors, be on TV, get your name on the – get yeah. your name out of the 250B where I don't know where it is and put it somewhere where it is, yeah. you know, <clears throat> and that's change. And you just – And it's scary that you changes – You just change the model. Yeah. You just go, you know what? And it's so core to the sport. But it's not like it needs to go away completely, yeah. but it's like we need to – for this yeah. to grow. Cause, and I'm only saying that because like when I look at the sport and when I know from the inside out problems with the sport, I just think so many problems and so many things that the top riders, the, the dudes that are – they're the ones that are carrying our sport. Yeah. The privateers aren't the heart of the sport. Eli Tomac, Ken Roxon. Jet Lawrence, like those dudes, they carry the sport yep. right now. Yeah. And I know the shit they hate. They hate getting to a track at 8 a.m. <laughs> and leaving at 1 a.m. Yeah. They hate that they're only on the track four times for the night. And they hate that by the time the, the 450 main event comes around, the track is fucked. Yep. Like, and all of these things are because there's like 140 guys <laughs> – that are trying to qualify for a 40, yeah. 44 man race. And it's just like, if we know the same guys are going to be roughly in that 44 every single weekend, yep. why the fuck are we ruining <laughs> the experience Bravery. of the yep. top 44 <clears throat> and the teams and the media? Do you know why, why I just don't want to go to the press conference? They've fucking been at the track 12 hours. Yeah. They're over it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I'm, I'm there's like, so there's, with you. And this is the thing that people don't know that watch shit on the broadcast and comment on Instagram. Yeah. That they're the vocal minority yep. that say fucking privateers. It's like, they're not, bro. Yeah. They're at, and it's like, there's <sighs> nothing against them and there's nothing, it, but it's like this whole thing, there's like just changes that should get made to like make this a more like, pointed and like precise like a real product that then you can like it then it's got the potential for growth like yeah. just getting five practices just gone giving them a longer time on the track having time to prepare the track properly like you know there's just yeah. all of these things you've got more time for media you've got more time for autographs you've got more time for the press conferences at the end like there's just so much more everything you, opens up let it breathe yeah, yeah. yeah like you open it up by like making it a professional sport but like you said change you know yeah. so it's like people really don't understand why you would want it it's not like a fuck the privateers yeah. thing it's like hey there's a big problem no. there's like these roadblocks <clears throat> there's like this if this gets moved around and and then all of a sudden <laughs> you've got another series that should be getting invested in that would force people to invest in you know yeah so dude there's it's interesting um one i hope you survive 
the next race that you attend when all the I've been saying for a while. I've been saying for a while. Um, no, like it's interesting. Like uh, <laughs> I'll have to share you the list. Like there's some stats I have where there's like some privateers that have entered 200 plus times and never made a main event. And like, I think they're awesome. They're amazing yeah. on the bike. Yeah. And I, I, I got the pleasure growing up in New England, um, which has at the time, and I think still does, has a vibrant moto community. Yeah. And the New England sports committee was just always a killer place. And guys could make a career racing the A-class every single weekend in out of contingency money and yeah, sponsorship yeah. from manufacturers and like a guy like Keith Johnson, who I grew, he's yeah, a few yeah. years older than me, but yeah. we grew up, he grew up taking me to the races um, or taking me practicing, I should say. Um, and he owns Southwick now. And like he rode pre- factory KTM for the during the nineties. And then um, he came back and raced in new England and that was his job racing in new England. And he, that was a privateer job in many ways. Yeah. And he made money yeah. like, he could do that as a job, right? Um, and so it's not that you don't want to em- – for me, it's not that you don't embrace the privateer, but, like, there's got to be other avenues. Yeah, there sport, just needs to be another. Sport. Yeah. Um, I look at it. Here's one that I think you'll you'll probably resonate with. One of the changes that really caused the the core fan, I think, to get kind of peeved on is when the broadcast switched to run the 450 heat races first. That is the best thing, best thing ever that they could have ever done. Dude, yep. Arlington this year – Watching Eli Tomac <laughs> first go thing. first in that heat, the fucking speed, bro. Amazing. I've never, I've been to so much shit. Yeah. That was the fastest I've ever seen dudes ride yeah. on a supercross track. It was <clears throat> mind blowing, bro. Yeah. Dude, I, so like, if you How look, people <laughs> hated on that? It, it was amazing, right? People are so upset. So I was look like, at, I'm done with all of you. I'm never listening to any of you yeah. because that was amazing. Look at So this is change. Back to the point, right? This is change. People don't like change. So literally, what just by putting the 450s first, like who do we want to see race the most? We want to see Jet Lawrence, Cooper Webb, Eli Tomac, Ken Roxon. That's who we're there for. Yeah. We used to have to wait. We would start the program and we'd talk about they're tied, cheering the red plate. Yeah. And you'd wait an hour before you saw them on track. Insane. The casual, the, the casual fan, a potential new fan, would have to wait an hour before they saw the best riders. Yeah. Right? Now, we're upset because what we've done is put them first. And what we're sacrificing is the least valuable four riders in the entire two main events. The, four, the, the thing that a bunch of people got upset about was that the 250 LCQ guys had 15 minutes to prepare for their main. Yep. And uh, truly no offense to you guys at all. Like I love every rider. I want to celebrate them all. But like in the stack rank of the 44 guys that are going to go in the two main events, those are the least four, most of the time are the least four important riders on a track from a value perspective of the ecosystem, right? 1,000%. And so what we have is the this tail is wagging. This is a meritocracy. It's Let's the, not make any yeah, mistakes. It's the tail wagging the dog. Like yes. we need to optimize for the stars of the sport. And that's what's going to bring in, that's what's going to bring in different sponsorship. That's what's going to bring in different consumers. But that's change. <laughs> And like that change is typically hard for our core fan. And yeah, now I'm going to die when I go to, <laughs> to Denver. People need to hear it, yeah. man. Like yeah. people honestly yeah. need to hear it because yeah. like, and, and that's what, that's when people would be like, what have you got against privateers? And it's like nothing. nothing. But the thing is, is that every single time, so in-ear communication, that's my yeah. big thing. I've been saying it for like years. It's finally starting yeah. to gather some momentum. But I talk about that, right? Yeah. And the messages I get in my DM. But well, well, who's the who's surprised you can afford it? Not my fucking problem. Yeah. It's a professional, professional sport. sport. Yep. I don't give a fuck <laughs> it's, how dude. they I, – I don't care. But their their bike, how much is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I props to all of them putting the effort together. Like I think it's so difficult to do it. They're obviously incredible riders. Even just to be – <laughs> to put one They're lap together amazing, on that. amazing, dude. Absolutely amazing. But it's just, that's not the show that we're there for, right? Like, well, if, But think about, <clears throat> like, Logan Carney, I did the podcast, right? Yeah. And that, he's, Killer he's privateer, like, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best privateers, right? Yep. And he'd be like, you get midway through a main event, he's probably five seconds a lap yeah, off it's... of 50 second lap time. So he's over 10% slower yeah. than the guy winning the race. 
if you were 10% slower than Max Verstappen, you are not allowed on the racetrack. Yeah. It's just like you would not have a license. Yep. Like, so we need to keep that in perspective. And I think that no one's getting a fair shake. Like the factory dudes aren't getting a fair shake at it because all of these concessions get made to deal with the bottom 1%. And then the bottom 1% isn't really getting a fair shake of it because no one cares. There's a few core fans that are like, oh, I love the 450 LCQ. I don't. That's when I go get groceries. You know, like I've got shit to do. I live a big, you know, I live a Three busy hours life. is a big commitment. Yeah, yeah, I live a busy life. That's yeah. when I go get groceries and that's when I'll start cooking dinner. You're missing some of, you are missing some of the great racing. I know, but again, it's, I know, but it's for the 18th through the 22nd slot on the game. Yeah, I know I'm missing some great racing. Yeah. I know they're great racers, but like I just got other shit to do. Yeah. And so it's like, they're not getting the fair shake either. Now, the other thing, right? So this is just, yeah. I'm on a rant. Fuck you. I love it. Welcome back. I haven't <laughs> done a podcast in a while, so now I'm just in. It's great. Um, get yeah. a guy like Logan Carney up. Yeah. Why is he 10% slower than Jet Lawrence? Because, and he'll tell you, he just doesn't do all the work. <laughs> yep. And so why? Because he's a different cat. He's a different personality, right? He's not Jet. He's yep. not Eli. He's not Cooper. But he's fucking cool. Yeah. And if he goes over into this, let's say I wish Feld would just buy Arena Cross and just like like UFC style, you know, like they own the big one and they own the small one. And then, F1, F2, F3. Yep. Yep. I wish they'd do that. And then Logan Carnia can drink beers and go to after parties and win an Arena Cross, which Jenny like Stevens I would watch on TV. Right now. Yeah. And then you got Stank Dog, who's cool as fuck, who could win that. And you get all these guys. Yep. Now they're winners again. Yeah. Because yep. they can they become stars win. again. Like they're great riders. Yeah. And then you start winning. Logan Carnia, Kevin Morans, Cade Clayson. Like these are really, really cool dudes. So I'm hit, sitting here saying fuck privateers, and it's like, in terms of the show, the top twenty best dudes in the world. Yeah. Like okay, we're we're good. That does not mean I do not want to see them. I want to see them in a place that is built for them, that yep. they can shine and they can become stars and they can – because you get the hardcore – like if you've got – it's the same as any sport. Like you, you've got these like multiple places where like NFL college football. You're not, yep. not watching college football. Major and minor league baseball. Major and minor league, you know what I mean? Yep. So you start getting these stars and then there's teams that are going to be in there. And then private, like Kevin Moran's is going to run a race team. Like his own, when he retires and stops racing, like he's still super young, but like he he's killing it. Yep. And so the opportunity that you start creating for these privateers by kicking them out of Supercross <laughs> will be like the best thing that ever happened to them. Yeah. And guaranteed that if there's like a there's a system where it's like every factory team, there's gonna be ten manufacturers or whatever. Like how how many manufacturers is there right yeah, now? I think we're at nine now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's eighteen spots. So if you yeah. mandatory in there, if you yep. mandatory require a team to in a four fifty class to have two four fifty riders on every gate, no matter what happens, you can't not show up with a four fifty rider, then You've got 18 spots. And then Feld can have four spots to give to whoever they want, right? Yep. That's fucking <clears throat> dope. Yeah. Everyone's a factory rider. Then you probably have Lars going like, fuck, if anything happens to one of the boys, like i got to have someone. All right, Phil Nicoletti, you're my reserve driver, you know? So like the, a big shakeup like this could be such a net positive. Yeah. And it's like, it's just looked at as like, don't change our sport. Don't touch it. Leave it. It's <laughs> it's amazing. It's like, no, it's not. The guys that are racing it think so much is shit. Yeah. They know, not you. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.